Hi guys, welcome back to another Star Trek Starships collection review. Um, this time I have a really exciting one. The Delta Flyer. Yes! Yes! This is the Delta Flyer from Star Trek Voyager. Finally, so I'm looking forward to this. Alright, so let's get right down to business. Got our magazine, have our ship. So let's get down to it. Alright. Issue 38, Starfleet Delta Flyer. It is considered a sh shuttlecraft, and it was launched in 2375 in the Delta Quadrant. Um, it is 21 meters long, and it has a standard crew of four, depending on how many they can fit in. So you open the page, the magazine, and we have our usual table of contents, slash specification page, slash um, how to put the stand on the model. And it was operated by Starfleet, if you really count the Voyager crew as being Starfleet, you know. Uh, again, launched in 2375, length 21 meters, crew of four, it has four and aft torpedo strips, uh, photonic missiles for weaponry, and uh, unimatrix shielding, and paramectallic hull plating for defenses. And we have a nice image of the ship there, a different view or perspective, along with some great text from episodes and a little bio about the ship. More screenshots from various Voyager episodes in which the flyer has been in, as well as some more great text. The diagram page showing where everything is, along with some trivia along the sides. And the designing of the Delta Flyer, which was designed by um, Rick Sternbach, who's no stranger to the Star Trek universe. Um, from what I understand, the Delta Flyer, or the Flyer as it is commonly and lovingly referred to by, by the fans and uh, the Voyager crew, um, the whole point of the Flyer was to solve the ever constant shuttlecraft problem. Uh, in the early season of Voyager, it seemed uh, much like on the original series how there was a red shirt that died in every episode or every other episode. Um, on Voyager, it became the common joke that if they went on the shuttlecraft someplace, chances are the shuttlecraft would come back either in pieces or destroyed or it just wouldn't come back at all. Um, so that was like the gag. And then the, people started raising questions. Well, they're stranded thousands of light years from home on the other side of the galaxy. If they used up all their shuttles, what are they going to do? Uh, surely they're going to run out. And that's true. Voyager only carried so many. So at some point they came up, I think it was in season four, they came up with the idea to have the Delta Flyer, which is, uh, which is the ship I have in front of me. So let's get back to it. All right, so some more conceptual artwork, more pictures, more conceptual artwork, sketches, and text about the design process, and more conceptual art. Ah, and the CG version of the flyer. So apparently this model was not a physical model at the studio. It was just a CG model because by that point in the series technology in the real world had advanced enough to the point where they didn't need to create a physical model. They only used a CG version. So uh, anytime you've seen the flyer, it's been a CGI version. So that's that. And our on-screen appearances page. I believe its first appearance was in the episode Extreme Risk. I'm right. Um, I think the last time it was seen was in Endgame, but I'm not sure. Um, it was an awesome episode. In fact, just last night I watched the uh, 100th episode of Voyager called Timeless, which uh, is an episode in which the Voyager crew try to uh, use the quantum slipstream technology that they kind of... Uh, downloaded or captured at the end of the previous season uh, hope and fear and they 
wanted to get home to the Alpha Quadrant a little earlier. And so, anyway, without get boring you by telling you the whole episode, they, the crew doesn't make it, but Chakotay and, and Harry Kim make it home to Earth in the Delta Flyer. So the whole episode has them using the flyer and trying to fix the timeline and all that kind of stuff. So it was a, it was a neat episode to watch. Pretty fitting considering that I got this yesterday. So, um, yeah, so that's our magazine. We have our wonderful image there on the cover. Nice art as always. And on the back we have our ship. So let's put the magazine aside and get to the gold itself. So here it is again in the Boxing Glory. Star Trek logos everywhere, disclaimers so kids don't eat it, stuff like that. This is not a kid's toy and all that stuff. Copyright info, warnings and symbols. So let's get it out. Ooh, can't wait for this one. And he comes out. Wow, first impressions. This is a thing of beauty. Look at that, pretty awesome. I'm really excited about this. This is the first Delta Flyer. <laughs> of course it is. But it's the first time that a model or die cast of the Delta Flyer has ever been created. I know there is a Hallmark Christmas ornament from a few years ago that had some voices or something in installed for installed inside of it. But uh, that's about it. There's never been, a, as far as I know, a model kit except for things that fans and model makers have created themselves. But this is it, and it looks pretty darn good. You got the Borg enhancements there. You got your warp drive and impulse manifolds. You got your Bussard collectors right here in the red. And if you hold it up to the sun or light or the camera, you can kind of see the blue there and the red. The registry information of Voyager is, is the camera focuses. Is, clean, is seen pretty clearly there. You got the NCC 74656. Um, and it says Delta Flyer on there. And uh, it's pretty awesome. Nice paint job. Uh, I know there were some complaints from my colleagues overseas and friends that have said that they wish that the windows were painted a little differently or done a little differently on the model. But I don't see any problem with that. I mean, it's, you know, maybe they could have put a little clear, like a plastic, black plastic or something on it, but that's minor, and I'm not gonna not like the model because of that. Um, it, it's dead on. I mean, I would have loved to have had this years ago, but better late than never. Um, it just looks great. Um, and as some people have said, technically, this is not a Federation starship because, or, or Federation shuttle, because it was not constructed in Federation space by Starfleet engineers or whatever. It was actually designed by Tom Paris and uh, Seven of Nine, and with the help of the Voyager crew, because they needed a solution, a fast and quick, and uh, you know, solution to their obvious, obvious shuttle problem, among other things. So, um, this little bad boy was it, and it was cool. It's got a little aft compartment inside for people to sleep in. For uh, you got medical, like a little bio bed that's hidden inside. You got all these uh, various consoles and screens back there to do some research, and a little lab. And it's got storage compartments for phasers and coats and jackets and all sorts of things. So this was really kind of cool, and the model looks great. It primarily metal, and the plastic is the bottom. It has a little bit of a weight. Not too heavy, but not too light. And for its size, and it, it, the scale is just fantastic. I mean, look at the detail. Can you see, can you see, can you see? Looks fantastic. So that is the Delta Flyer. Uh, I am very excited about this. I'm very, very happy that Eagle Moss included it in the collection. Um, this was one that I was really looking forward to, especially when I went on the website a while back and I knew it was pending on the list very down at the bottom. Um, so I was a little excited about that. Um, this ranks is probably one of the better models they've done, one of the best ones. Uh, and it will look nice when it's finally on uh, display 
for all to see and enjoy it as I have here. Um, but anyway, that's the uh, Delta Flyer. Thank you, Eagle Moss, for uh, making it, producing it, including it in the collection. Um, keep up the good work. Um, I haven't had too many quality control issues lately. I know my runabout that came a while back, beside the one that I cheated and bought from a comic shop, um, came with some unpainted windows in the aft compartment, so I had to get a replacement. But they sent it. Took a little time, but I got it. Um, but other than that, things are okay. And the collection just continues to grow and grow and grow. I believe this is issue 38. So that's 40 sh of these ships and 40 of these magazines that we have now. And the collection, by the time it's done, will be 90 plus. Can you imagine having 90 of these bad boys around? I can but I just don't know where I'm going to put it. But anyway, enough about that. So thank you again for watching. Next month, uh, in April, I will be receiving the Romulan drone ship from Enterprise. And I don't know what else comes with that. Maybe the Enterprise B, I think? I don't know. Well, the Klingon Raptor? I'm not sure. It's one of those two. Um, so I look forward to next month. Um, this has been a good month for the two pairs that I get and I also have been advised that I will be receiving my USS Vengeance special uh, from Star Trek in a Darkness uh, so hopefully I'll be getting that in the next couple of weeks because my contact has assured me that I will be receiving it very shortly um, so, so that's that on that so thank you so much for watching and uh, if you have any co questions comments concerns or anything like that please feel free to drop it below and until next time, I'll catch you guys on the flip side and live long and prosper.